Okay, so I figured for today's video, let's look at the malware that is exploiting the log4j vulnerability. I'm just going to walk you through how I would normally go about uh, looking at this. So um, to start with, I made a honeypot to capture exploitation attempt. The code is up on GitHub if you want to take a look at it or have a play. Um, so we're just going to cap the logs. Okay, so we've got our first exploitation attempt. Now there's an easy way and a hard way to um, work with this uh, JNDI string. So if you've had a play around with the exploit kit that they're using, which I have, you will know that the directories basically say, create a basic um, shell payload and then run a command. And then the command is base64 encoded. And then that's the command. So the really easy way to deal with this is to just copy the, uh, the command part out and then base64 decode it. And then you have your, uh, your final command string. Now, if you haven't encountered this specific exploit kit before, we can do it the regular way, which is we need the full path. So if you didn't know, curl can actually download from LDAP, so we can just curl this full path. And what we're gonna get is a object that tells Java to basically go and get the code from a URL. So the Java code base is the base URL and the Java factory is the name of the class. I believe this does time out. So if you try and manually type it too slowly, uh, you'll actually get a 404, but you can just basically combine those two elements and get the final class name like so. And uh, just make sure to append dot class on the end. So as you can see, that has actually uh, given us a 404, which basically means we were too slow and it deleted the, um, it deleted the object before we could fetch it. So what I'm going to do is use a script, which is also up on my GitHub to do it automatically so that it'll basically, it'll grab the object, parse out the URL and the Java factory, and it'll get the class. Okay, so we've, uh, we've downloaded our class here. Now, as you'll notice, there's an underscore at the end of the name. Um, this is something I do just for safety. Uh, if you're sending around malware to other researchers, then you don't really know what system they're on. And if they're on a system that could accidentally run a file, say it's an exe file and they accidentally double click instead of single click, then they're going to infect themselves. So naturally, I will try and uh, append an underscore to the end of all file names. That way it's easy to remove if you need to actually run the file, but otherwise it's not going to run. I'm just going to rename that to the normal path. So what we're going to use is a tool called JDGUI, which is basically just a Java decompiler and we're going to open the class in it. So as you can see, it's as simple as that. Most Java is not obfuscated, so you can just simply throw it in a Java decompiler and you're good to go. As you can see, we basically got the same string that we previously got the faster way, but I figured I'd show you the, the, the full way for completeness. Um, now I would caution being very, very careful with this string, because if you paste that into your shell, it's gonna infect you. Um, if you're running this on a real machine, which I absolutely do not recommend you ever do, I would type out the full URL. I would not copy and paste just in case, but um, I highly recommend running all an analysis in a VM and having a snapshot so you can quickly roll back if something goes wrong. So I'm in a VM, so I'm just going to copy the command and I'm going to remove the silence so that we can actually see what it does. Okay, so we've got a sh script. And you see this script is pretty long, so we're just going to start at the beginning. Okay, so it's um, it's setting up LD preload. Uh, LD preload is often used to basically load malicious modules, uh, usually root kits. To hide a file on Linux. So it's probably setting up some kind of rootkit here. It's disabling the firewall, flushing the IP tables rule, which will disable IP tables. UFW is a different firewall. We're just going to keep scrolling down and see if we can find where it actually downloads the malware. So here we go. Bin download URL. That's probably the malware. Um, it's downloading an SO file, which I assume is the rootkit that it's going to load with LD preload. Uh, we could analyze that, but just for uh, briefness, I'm just going to go straight to the malware. A 
Oh wow, so this is taking a really long time to download and it's um looks like a 13.9 megabyte file. So I'm gonna guess that that is Golang because Golang is the perfect language for making your binary as massive as humanly possible. Um, so we're just gonna do strings on it and see what it, it whether it actually is Golang. Okay, so that was a lot of strings. So we're just gonna scroll up real quick. Okay, so yeah, uh, I can tell that this is Golang immediately because these are these are Go um, objects or I think potentially function calls. It depends. But Go basically encodes a lot of the functions or objects used by default into the binary. So if you see stuff like this, it's probably Go. Um, I, I do a bit of Go programming, so I actually recognize a lot of the function calls here. So that explains why it's a absolutely massive binary. Uh, Go typically encodes a lot of debug information and uh, it just basically makes the binary huge. I might actually reverse the binary in another video, but I just wanted to show you how to get malware from log4j attempts. It's a big issue right now, so I'm sure a lot of you are actually having to look into this. And if you appreciate my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also I'm on Patreon slash Malware Tech if you want to get some behind the scenes videos or just support me.